men are refusing to live with women. I mean, when I tell you this, don't you ever, 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 ever cohabitate with a woman. Men are refusing to live with women. Why are so many men now stepping out and telling other men never, ever, ever cohabitate, never live with women? And what are the social repercussions of men choosing to no longer live with women? And in many cases, telling other men to never even approach women, let alone go on dates. What are the consequences of all of this? And how is this going to affect both men and women going into the future? Watch to the end of the video to learn how this is going to have serious effects on women and what the results that will ultimately occur between men and women and society as a result of men refusing to live with women. Now let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. The moment you cohabitate with a woman, you lose all your power as a man. That woman has no mystery of you at all. She literally walks through the house, leaving her mark everywhere, lashes and wigs and clothes, panties, every, bro, everything. This her home. You understand? On top of that, she know you from head to toe. She know what soap you use, what time you get in the shower, what you like to eat at what time. She know when your phone go, go off with the alarm. She know who's going to call you through the day, et cetera, bro. I'm, I'm telling you, cohabitating is like signing up to get cheated on. There's no mystery. She has, she's not curious about you at all. When she goes to work, she can't wait to get away from you. Y'all see each other every single day. You think, a lot of times, man, fellas think that being this fairy tale husband, moving a family in together and building a home and being in land with your wife every night, reading the books next to each other and drinking coffee and having breakfast in the morning together. Bro, that is signing up to get cheated on, man. This is why you should never cold approach a woman. Despite what many other of the female dating coaches will tell you, it's total crap. Approach is always this manifestation in your male mind that this woman, because she is so attractive, would benefit you and your life. But you have no idea if she is relationship material, if she is a rancid B-I-T-C-H, if you know what I'm talking about. The only reason you're approaching her is because you find her attractive. And then you're going to turn around and resent her for your entire life for having that power over you. It is purely shallow and you are already setting up a poor power dynamic within a relationship if you do end up getting in one with this girl. So take it from big sis, meet them out in the wild, through friends, maybe online, but women don't deserve cold approach, not these women. Yo, y'all, that was so insane. See, in your male mind, absolutely right. Preach sis, preach. Uh huh. Preach, you know, men, the male mind and the female mind work differently. All right, she understands. We only approach because we think she's pretty, and then we, you know, we think she's pretty or she looks innocent. A lot of women do this. They dress like a lot of women will dress a certain way to make themselves look innocent, like the librarian look or all of these different things, so they can attract a guy. You know, you don't even know how her, the kind of lifestyle she's been living. Like, you, you, you think that you're with this little anime nerdy girl. Bro, she has a body count. She has a body count that would make uh, that would make John Wick rethink his career. Like, damn, bro, you really racked up bodies like that? And I've been at, th at that this long? Nah, maybe I need to rethink things. Maybe I need to rethink things, all right? She would make Master Chief feel like he really wasn't fighting the Covenant with her body count, okay? She would make the Doom Slayer go back to hell and, and say, well, he has to drop more bodies because he has to level up to get on her level. I'm just being so honest. Because a lot of these girls that we see, and they look so innocent, they are not innocent. They will literally keep track of every single guy that they've been physically intimate with and then, and then take notes on the things they liked about him how he performed in bed, different parts of his body that they liked, how long it took him to perform, how long it took him to do this or that. Who does these types of things? 
Like they took the concept of a little black book to the next level. And these people are so deep in their masculine energy. So you don't even know how miserable it is. Oh, she's so educated, bro. Some of the most educated women that I've known have crazy body counts and they're absolutely miserable people to be around. Realistically, back in the 90s and before then, you only met people a couple of different ways, either through friends, friends, family, at work, or at a bar. And someone that you met at a bar was usually not going to be someone that you're going to start a life with. You know, like one night stands don't usually end in a uh, in a relationship. You know, the idea is to never see that person again. So you don't go to the bar to meet someone. All right. You meet someone through friends and family. You know, you meet someone through a, pl- a, pl- a platonic encounter. And you also have to be very, very careful because women will try to set up a scene for you to approach them. All right. Avoid that. Avoid that. Even they'll even look at you hard. Don't do it. Do not do it. It creates a power dynamic because a woman will give you I give you indicators that she wants you to approach her. You approach her, and then she's like, oh, I don't like this guy. And then she'll turn around and complain on social media that just because a woman is glancing your direction or she's nice to you doesn't mean that she wants you to approach her. Like, this is how they operate. This is how they operate. No wonder that guys are waking up and like, yeah, we're not doing this anymore. We're not approaching anymore. We're not even having conversations anymore. Like, y'all, there are so many videos on YouTube right now. Like, look at all of these videos. Look at all of these videos, okay? i never live with a woman. Ne- never live with a woman. Another video, never live with a woman. Another video, why you should never live with a woman. Another video, Coach Alpha, never live with a woman. Always have your own place, bro. Another one, three reasons why men shouldn't live with a woman they love. That's from Entrepreneur in Cars. That video just came out nine months ago. This is a large YouTuber. Okay, guys, this is like this is the message now. Do not marry. Do not cohabitate. And these are not these are not MGTO. These are not MGTOW channels. Most of them are not MGTOW channels. MGTOW has been banned off on TikTok. It's been banned on the tube. And guess what? Men are naturally coming to these conclusions on their own. Like, do not cohabitate. Don't do it. Don't do it. Three reasons why you should never chase a woman. And if you're someone who wants to learn how to attract women rather than chase them, then you might want to consider hitting that follow button so that you can see more videos like this. The first reason why you should never chase a woman is because you start to get caught up in chasing the thrill rather than the connection. Sometimes the thrill and excitement of trying to win her over blinds you from whether or not you even like or connect with this girl. So ask yourself, am I even really into her or am I just into the challenge of winning her over? The second reason why you should never chase a woman is the missed opportunities. Focusing all your energy on one girl who is not reciprocating means you might miss out on getting to know somebody who is genuinely interested and willing to put in the effort for a relationship with you. And number three, it decreases your value perception. When you chase somebody excessively, it inadvertently sends the message that you don't value yourself enough to require equal effort in return, which decreases how much you're valued by the other person. Guys, so many men do this. And now, of course, you have women who are like, oh, why aren't guys chasing us anymore? Why aren't guys approaching us anymore? Why aren't guys talking to us anymore? And they know the reason, okay? Because now what's happening is the men that they want them to want to approach them are no longer approaching them. Women told men, never approach a woman that you do not know, all right? Women do not like, women absolutely do not like 80, 80% of all men. And then, there's, and then 15%, they find them as average. Okay, so if they deal with you, you're just like, guys, it's insane. It's insane. 80% of men are completely eliminated by women. You do not even have a shot. You do not have a shot whatsoever. 80%, 15%, they find average. And if you try really hard and have cash and all of these things, maybe just maybe they'll give you attention and you can be one of their plan B guys. Okay. And then there's the 5% of men that they actually want, and then on t- and then even when you're dealing with that 5%, they're still just chasing after the top 
1% of men in the end. This is why all of these men are like, yeah, we're, we're done. We are done. We are never going to chase. We are not even replacing. We are living, you know, simple lives of luxury and comfort because we do not want the stress. And women are seeing this. And this is the reason why they're trying to shut down the passport kings from walking away. Because, guys, you have to remember, women operate on feelings, not facts. So trying to rationalize with them will never work. The only time women that actually, the only time women actually use reason is after they've destroyed everything in their lives. And then suddenly, you know, they realize their feelings betrayed them. And now they're going to turn to facts. But other than that, you know, emotions are a currency for women. So feelings will always, you know, be their center of logic. They, you know, they basically choose the feelings that they like. Which feeling do I like the most? Okay, that one. So that's how I make decisions. Whichever thing, whichever, whichever I feel the best about, you know, whatever outcome I feel the best about, that's the fact that I'm going to choose. Okay, that's how I make decisions. It doesn't matter if it's wrong or not, but that's my facts. Feelings take the place of facts for women. That's how they make decisions. Men make decisions typically using facts. Women make decisions using feelings. So you can never win an argument. You'll never be right. Women will never be equal to men as long as they don't feel equal to men. This is how crazy it is. It doesn't matter if men were all homeless and in living in extreme poverty and women were ruling the entire world. If they still say that they don't feel equal to men, they would not be equal to men. Even of all the men, even if men, you know, all the men are gone on the planet, there are no more men. If women do not feel like they are equal to men, even though factually using facts, there are no men left, it wouldn't matter because the only thing that matters is how they feel. The facts don't matter. So what's going to happen? Well, here we have our answer. You know, as a result of men refusing to live with women, you know, rates of cohabitation are, are going to decrease. Rates of dating have already increased. Marriage is almost extinct. Only one out of every 1,000 men in the United States are currently getting married. And come 2020, come 2030, 45% of all women will be childless and single in the U.S. Notice there's there's a little trick in there because it's it's 45% of all women between the ages of 25 and 45, 25 and 44 will be childless and single. What they're not telling you is that you'll also have a significant number of women who will have children but they'll also be single. When you factor those women into the equation, you're looking at statistics where anywhere from 70 to 80% of women will potentially be single in the US when you factor in women who have children. Okay? So an astronomical 70 to 80% of women will actually be single come 2030. Single. And when you have numbers like that, that's when the, Bi the Bible verse pops up that in the last days or in, in those in that specific day, you know, six men will, will take one man, cling to one man and say, we will bring our own bread and provide our own grain and all this other stuff. But just let, allow us to take your name. Like, that's where we're at, bro. That is where we're at. And what's going to happen to men? Nothing. Men always have men always have to find a way to survive. So, you know, because if we don't, if we do not find a way to succeed, we cannot survive. Women live life on easy mode, but without men to supplement the living, supplement their living, that's it. The government is broke. The government cannot even pay. The government can't pay its tax, can't pay its interest anymore, can't pay the interest on all of its loans. And if the U.S. suddenly defaults on its debt, and that's where we're heading, guys. None of us are talking about this right now. The gov no one's talking about it, that the U.S. is heading to a place where it can and will default on its debt. Because if it cannot pay the interest on its debt, it will default on its debt. And if the U.S. ever defaults on its debt, even one time, it will lose its credit. It will lose its credit rating. Its credit rating will go down. If its credit rating goes down, that means that it'll end up having to pay high, even higher interest rates, or and high and paying pay even more to borrow money. And fewer countries will want to loan the U.S. money. If you look at what's happening in China right now, China's having their own problems, and they're all moving over to BRICS, which is you know, Brit, uh, Brazil, China, India, and uh, Brit, uh, it's Brazil, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And the number of uh, many countries are joining BRICS. Evidently, Saudi Arabia is joining BRICS. 
uh, 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 Turkey is joining BRICS. Numerous con countries are rushing to join BRICS, and BRICS will basically just be the reserve currency of the world. So they'll keep their currencies, but when it comes to settling payments for things like oil or, or goods and other things, you're, they'll settle it in BRICS, and BRICS will, be, BRICS will be backed by gold and precious metals. And China has a ton of gold. What is, what, does, what is the U.S. dollar backed by? Nothing. It used to be called the petrodollar. It is no longer the petrodollar because Saudi Arabia has basically said that, you know, they're no longer going to be uh, accepting U.S. dollars exclusively to pay, for, to pay for oil. So now countries will be using BRICS as soon as it comes out to pay for oil. So not only will BRICS be the new petrodollar, but because it's going to be the reserve currency of the world, it'll be the reserve currency in at least 40% of the world. It'll be the reserve currency. If you want to buy things from China, you're going to need BRICS. Okay? What's the purpose of using of keeping the U.S. dollar right now? It's not backed by anything, and the, and the value of it's declining rapidly. So people are going to begin converting their money over to BRICS. People are going to begin saying that they want to be paid in BRICS or crypto or something else or, or you know, or Pokemon cards or Legos. They want to be paid in tangible and something tangible, but they don't want to be paid in U.S. United States dollars. And if the and what's the government going to do? Basically, oh, if you don't accept USD, then you don't eat. You can't transact in anything. People, guys, right now there's an entire market of bartering that I had no idea was existed, where there's a lot of people, men in Western society, that have moved back to bartering, and they are using bartering. They're using bartering. To uh, they're using bartering to, to get everything that they want. Okay, this is trading skills and services, skills, services, everything to get the things that they want. I had no idea this was already happening again. You know, this is a comment from one of my subscribers, Shakama, where I discussed the subject, and he said there is a full subculture of people trading services, blue collar work, and goods as if it was back in medieval times. And guys, when you, it, you know, we live in the future where we have apps, so it doesn't take a lot for people to do these things, all right? And it doesn't take, and people will move to Pokemon cards, people will move to crypto, they will move to things that hold value, all right? And they'll create entire systems around this as they dump the U.S. dollar and move on. The future of society is not looking good as men are refusing to live with women. It is just a precursor for, for, for us growing further apart and women basically having futures where they're going to face extraordinary amounts of hardship because they're not going to have men to supplement their cost of living anymore. The government is not able to doing it. So they're going to have men, especially the plan B guys, to step up and provide for them and their kids. It's over. It really is over. And by, by the way, guys, if you're enjoying the content, consider subscribing to our newsletter for my personal thoughts and insights and a free copy of my ebook, the, the Blueprint for Escaping the Rat Race. Click the link in the description to get your free copy of the ebook of the Blueprint for Escaping the Rat Race. What do you guys think regarding all of this? Men are refusing to live with women. Let me know your thoughts, and we'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away, and cheers.